I now want to ask kindly uh, Mr. Martin Smolka from Yonim Research to open your camera. Um, he's our first speaker. He will present one of the um, success stories, I would say, um, of this uh, big group, uh, big family, um, an open innovation testbed project. So the first three presentations will feature testbed projects. Um, and Martin will start with the next gen microfluidics uh, project, which is coordinated by our NEM research um, here from Graz. And quite a lot of BioNanonet members are involved in that project. So, to not take too much time from you, Martin, the floor is yours. We are welcoming you um, to your presentation. Thank you very much, Andreas. I'm very happy to present you Next Gen Microfluidics. Um, like you said, Andreas, it's an open innovation testbed, and you will hear the example of two open innovation testbeds. So, first for me, Next Gen Microfluidics. And afterwards, John also will talk about such a concept. So it's interesting. Uh, so you, you will get two interesting examples. Um, so first of all, here in this open innovation test, but we are working on microfluidics. And for all of you who maybe don't know so much about it, so when you talk about microfluidics, then we generally think of chips or cartridges um, which contain at least micro channels or micro reaction chambers. And typically our purpose is that we perform chemical, biochemical, or also even biological processes in a miniaturized format. So we are shrinking down this, the size of devices for these processes. And uh, that is very useful um, wherever you need to get um, diagnostics at, at a speci specific point where you directly need the measurement and you don't need to, uh, don't want to send samples around. So uh, for example, measurement at the point of, of demand. Um, then another application is also uh, you can culture cells in chips, so um, size down biological processes and investigate, for example, uh, the action of pharmaceuticals. Um, well, one con very concrete example of why microfluidics can help us a lot, that's the current pandemic crisis with the coronavirus. So there um, it's all very present for all of us that we need quick tests, which we can basically perform everywhere. And there microfluidics uh, is bringing up a lot of innovative uh, solutions for that. Um, but one important point here is that, so the manufacturing of such chips, so microfluid chips, um, is typically, so the cost for the manufacturing is uh, rather high because the processing is done in single chips. So like, for example, injection molded cartridges, and that also limits the throughput of the production. So therefore we questioned ourselves, um, what if we would just transfer processes which are already there from print industry and use them for manufacturing of microfluidics. And uh, concretely that means, so we um, are working on the transfer of imprinting, printing and lamination technologies um, for microfluidic chip manufacturing. And therefore our core comp competency, uh, we are calling lab on a foil devices. So um, at the beginning, we have often mentioned the concept of an open innovation testbed, but for sure we should explain a bit more um, what an open innovation testbed is. So first of all, it's a funding scheme from the European Union. So it's a Horizon 2020 funding scheme starting more or less at 2018, so a rather new concept. And the idea behind this is to take um, pilot line facilities which are um, which have already which are already quite advanced um, for example from previous EU projects to connect them together and then um, connect them with others and upgrade them so that we are forming an open innovation test bed, which is then open to external partner parties to scale up um, their applications so the pilot network um, should be so connected that we can um, work together and scale up external 
requests. Um, well, in the open, the, the important thing, I'm not talking about an open innovation testbed project, um, but only about an open innovation testbed because it should not last during a project time, but it should um, be a long-term unit, so it should also operate afterwards. So the project is just for ramping up the whole thing and um, it should carry on afterwards. Good, uh, well, uh, we said that we want to connect pilot lines. So the important thing is that um, they can play together and, and the whole connection makes sense. So therefore we cover the entire value chain. So include uh, design, material development, and also machine development, so the uh, production process development, and make them useful for uh, concrete microfluidics applications and for um, final ma manufacturing of devices. And yeah, we have, we have partners from medical sensor diagnostics, from medical diagnostics field, from cell culture applications, bioprocess applications. And yeah, the important thing um, in the backbone, we have um, established and well-known um, scientific organizations. And that all together is the open innovation test, but next to microfluidics. Um, we said that we should be open in the end. Um, that means that we also need to address um, a lot of dem uh, different demands. And therefore, in the project, we are working on five applications. So for our EU project, first of all, that's already quite, um, quite a lot. And so we really work on a broad range of applications. I don't go in too much detail, but just uh, showing the, um, the sectors. So uh, food monitoring, medical diagnostics and very current application also a coronavirus antibody test uh, then smartphone based home diagnostics then these uh, cell cultivation uh, lab on a chip applications and finally sensor for bioprocess monitoring uh, so that is already part of, um, which is fixed fixed uh, part of our project and with these applications, so we are working, like I said, on, on these three main pillars of, um, of technology. So first of all, we need to produce the microfluidic structures, which we do uh, by imprinting on foils, either uh, on thermoplasts, we can do that, patterning of thermoplasts, or by patterning of UV curable photopolymers on um, foil substrates, so these technologies um, we are covering. And then after that, for biosensors, we need to print biomolecules. So um, we have printing processes, but uh, they are adapted to um, printing of antigens, antibodies, uh, nucleic acids, as we need them in, in the uh, biosensing application. Then finally, lamination is needed for closing our chips or for uh, producing multi-layer devices. So that's the zoo of uh, equipment we have of pilot line facilities we have um, so that I, I don't want to show only uh, rendered pictures everybody could, could do that but we really have the devices behind it so here you see microfluidic structures rolling out out of our two different machines so that's the first thing uh, you have so to say endless rolls with microfluidics patterns uh, in the first process then here we have a micro array spotter um, pilot line. So there we transfer the patterned foils and then we get, our, for example, our sensor spots um, included here. Uh, yeah, and then here an example of our lamination equipment so that we can really assemble complex devices. Um, yeah, just to give you a better um, uh, imagination what we can do with these pilot facilities with this technology. So um, one strong point of the technology is um, we can produce fully foil-based microfluidic chips. So uh, just a laminate of uh, different polymer foil layers. Um, and the main advantage here is so the process parallelization. So um, changing from single chip operations to processing on endless foils, so to say, uh, which increases the throughput and the manufacturing costs compared to current approaches. 
Um, and here we have a concrete example. So uh, we have previously already implemented the transfer from a standard injection molded chip to a foil based chip. Uh, that is also part of our lab on a chip paper. And this concrete application is made for testing of antibiotics resistant bacteria. So um, the device actually can take up a liquid sample here um, in the standard chip here or in the foil chip here. Then the um, sample is sucked up, flushed over our sensor spots. Um, and then the whole chip is input, put into a device, which then runs a dispensing sequence with all the reagents which are needed for this assay. And um, that is a concrete example um, that we can set up um, a diagnostic chip with, a, with our FOIL technology. And in Nextgen Microfluidics, we are working on the implementation of, of this corona antibody test in this platform. Good. Um, another example is so we can enhance the functionality of, um, of let's say, conventional devices. So uh, we can um, we can add functional foils, so for, uh, with micro patterns, and combine them, for example, with uh, injection molded components or with glass components. And our added value here is um, that we introduce a new functionality, which would not be possible with the classic manufacturing approaches. Uh, and to give you one um, one other example, which we are about to publish, but paper is not yet um, finished. Um, here we added a patterned foil on the bottom side of a micro title plate, and the patterns here are uh, micro channels. Actually, they are open micro channels, and the inner walls of, um, are uh, functionalized, and therefore cell growth of neuron. Uh, was possible to just be restricted to these microchannels. So therefore, um, the growth is following the patterns which is defined by the microchannels. So just an example how we can um, give, uh, we can um, add new functionality with our technology. Good. Um, well, so far about the technology and about um, what it is useful for. Then more uh, about, let's say, the, the logics of an open innovation testbed. Um, all innovation testbeds have one thing in common. So they need a single entry point because we want to address um, external parties. We want to address you so that we can finally um, help you in upscaling of your devices. And, and um, yeah, in quite a lot of cases, and also in our case, we are founding a startup. So um, this access point to the open innovation testbed will be an uh, entity which we call the Microfluidics Innovation Hub. And so in our project budget, uh, we got re reserved budget for that. So that is uh, for us all that's a really motivating thing. So we are uh, creating a startup in the microfluidics um, field. And um, the startup will do the following things. So first of all, it, like I said, it will be the access for you to our services. Um, so that's the connection point uh, to you as potential customers. Um, so we should, we should be open basically for all interested parties. And uh, the, the startup will also guarantee a quality control for this big zoo of connected services. And um, for interested parties, we will also um, provide access to investment and to venture capital. So we help uh, realizing your microfluidics idea also with the, uh, with the necessary investments. And with, with all that, our mission is uh, that we finally make applications commercially viable, which have not been viable before. First of all, with our new manufacturing approach and also with the, all the support Microfluidics Innovation Hub can give. Um, well, yeah, and one important take home message. So we really need to demonstrate to, uh, yeah, to all of you and to the European Commission that we are, uh, we have really this open concept. We are really open for all applications and therefore we are launching an open call. So this principle is, um, um, I think it's often used in current EU projects. So we will 
will ask for external applications uh, for external projects and we would then work on um, also supported by the EU funding which we have. So if external parties are interested in scaling up of their application in our technology, there is funding for our work um, on the implementation. And the time frame for that, so in the second half of this year, the open call will launch. Well, and then um, I'm close to summarize. So uh, we have established our open innovation testbed and what we offer is these foil-based microfluidic chips or composite devices, uh, which um, allow higher throughput than current manufacturing processes and which add new functionalities, which have not been possible before in these composite devices. And yeah, please remember there will be the open call um, in which you can scale up your applications with us. Uh, I'm pretty close in the 15 minutes time. Um, that, therefore, I thank all our partners. So that's the big network. And of course, the European Union. Thanks for support with the financing. Thank you, Martin. Um, um, as you said, uh, this one minute we need to uh, take down from your five minutes discussion. So four minutes left. Um, thank you very much for the good talk. Um, I think people have got an impression what next-gen microfluidic uh, will provide to the people.